Welcome back to Anchor Designs. Uh, this is going to be a bit of a slightly different video, but it's something that I get quite a few questions on, quite a few bits and bobs. So this is going to be my favourite things of 2020 that I've managed to kind of pick up by. Some of the stuff I've had for a little bit longer, so I am cheating a little bit, but it's perhaps something that you guys might be interested in. And what I'll do is I'll leave a link to everything in the description. So what I'd probably say, there's nothing in here that is more than a hundred quid. So there's, uh, there's a few gift ideas in here as well. So let's jump straight into it and uh, take a look at what we've got. Okay, so the first item is going to be this Just Right plunger can. And um, those that don't know, I've recently got a much larger workshop, which has allowed me to kind of buy more tools and fill more space. Now, this Just Right can is American made, and you're probably thinking, what the hell does it do? So, I do everything from metalworking to turning to wood turning to fabricating to pretty much everything at a pretty mediocre level. And what I tend to kind of find is that if you need something just cleaning or degreasing or just a little bit of a wiping down, what this does here, instead of trying to get something, spraying it, getting it all over the place, is this plunger can, so you get your dirty rag here. And what it will do is just give you a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a dab here and it will put exactly the amount that you want on your cloth to then degrease take something off wipe down or you know get a rid of a bit of soot now um i used to use these in a production environment uh, years ago i tried to buy one of these and they weren't available they're now 25 pounds on ebay i bought it and had a bit of a problem i had mine that was smashed at the top and i got in contact with the seller and they replaced it but this is a great little safe put it in a corner fill it up with paraffin you're not going to be using it too much or you can fill these with like acetone and pure solve and, and that type of thing which is more stronger degreasers what i tend to find for me is paraffin works really well i'm going to stop talking and i'm going to move on to the next thing the link uh, will be in the description number two which is a 3M and the part code is a 5742. Now, um, those that know, I used to work in a body shop for a very, very short amount of time and also work in the sheet metal industry and blah, 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 blah. These are flexible foam sponge made by 3M and it fits the standard Merca sanding pads that you get. Now, for flatting and blocking, that type of thing, you want something solid, and Merca do the solid blocks, that type of thing. But what these are really good at is bending, so fitting a, a curve that you've got, especially these are great for when I'm using the wood turning lathe. And it's great for if you're doing some spindle turning or you want to you know, just clean up the inside of a bowl, this is really, really handy. And to be honest with you, I'd much rather have this flying in my face than I would perhaps, like I've seen people glue blocks of wood with some abrasive paper on there. Um, this is, you know, nice and light, soft, and uh, a lot of people don't know about these. So I've had this for getting on for 10 years. I've got two of these and I'll, um, I'll leave a link to the description. But since I've done a lot more wood turning, since I've been in the new workshop, I'm finding that this is coming out a lot more. And to be honest with you, I could do with a new one because these do eventually wear down and I've got like, looks like mice has, you know, kind of chewed at it. Link in the description, next one. This is a Ryobi pin gun, and this is not what we're here to talk about today. Um, those eagle-eyed of you will know that this has got a Makita battery in this. So um, what this is, is a adapter kit, and this is basically a converting from your Ryobi um, plus one batteries into Makita LXT batteries. Now, I am a big Makita fan, I've always had it, you stick with it, you know, one colour, one battery system, the suck you in type thing. Now, I wouldn't buy one of these for perhaps, you know, all different brands and colours, that type of thing. I wanted a pin gun, I wasn't going to spend 400 quid on the Makita one, I wasn't that impressed when I saw it. I've been pretty pleased with the Ryobi, it's not sp sponsored or anything like that, I haven't really used it enough to kind of warrant 
you know, me saying if it's good or bad. Never had any problems. And I have probably put half a box of pins through this. So I don't know what that is, probably two, 300 nails pins. Uh, adjustability is very good, very handy. But the important thing is, is that I can use my Makita batteries in the Ryobi tool, thus saving me lots and lots of money. Um, now the downside, what I typically do is when I'm using this, is I will use, I bought some uh, Chinese Makita knockoff batteries. I know, I'm very, very tight, but there's a um, the computer inside here that if it detects like it's ran out of battery, because this constantly gets feedback from the Makita tools into one of these, it will like shut off as a safety device because they're obviously lithium ion and they're gonna set fire and explode and kill everything. Uh, hence why if you buy the cheap Chinese crappy ones is that they don't have that inside it and they're just a battery from what I understand. So I don't usually put my expensive Makita batteries in there. I put my cheap Chinese ones in, but purposes of the video. Link in the description. I'll move on to the next one. Bit weird, I know. A bit out there, I understand. Uh, I've been using these for some years now. These are gel active skull. Shawl, shawl. They're inserts for your shoes, they go into your trainers, into the bottom of your work boots. Because I'm doing probably a little bit more of off camera, to be honest, uh, heavier and bigger, larger projects, that type of thing, I was kind of brought into my apprenticeship that you must have all your PPE, including footwear. And yes, it's very important, and uh, I've been wearing steel toe cap boots when I'm doing any kind of fabrication welding project. Now, um, that's great, and there's not a problem, but when you're working a lot, and this is like really hard concrete floor, um, you kind of feel it in the fatigue, and yes, I'm a wimp, I know, but having these in here, these are about a tenner, and uh, yeah, I'm really, really enjoying these, and I have done for some years now, and it kind of just makes the day a little nicer and not too heavy on your feet, that type of thing. Link in the description. Next one. Now, this genuinely isn't a sponsor or anything like that. It's I've joined the bandwagon and I have bought some ISO tunes. These are the Mark I, uh, I don't know what they're called, extra plus something, whatever. And these are the new ISO tunes links. So these are ear defender protectors, whatever you want to call them. And they are Bluetooth. So what these are great for is protecting your hearing and listening to music on the go. Now, yes, it's bad and the old boys will tell you you shouldn't listen to music and everything like that. Now, I totally agree if you're accompanied by a work hand or somebody else within the workshop, but these are great if you're sat in here, not doing a great deal, tidying up, anything like that. And I like these when there's nobody else around. So these are very, very good. The n <laughs> I like loud music, these don't go very loud. The charge on them has been excellent. I've not been using these for very long, but I have been using these for quite some time now. And uh, there was a bit of a special offer that they've recently had, and you can get like two sets of these for 40 quid. It's, uh, if you look at uh, Paul Jackman from Jackman Works, I think it's Paul, I don't know. Jackman works and he has like um, Jackman 10 and you get 10% off anything in the shop, which is quite nice. So I got 10% off of these when I bought them and they came really, really quickly. And the people on Instagram are very nice. And um, yeah, worth getting, not worth getting if you're thick or whatever and you, you know, aren't very familiar. Uh, the reason why I bought these is again fabricating, grinding, that type of thing. Not you know, not super dangerous stuff, but really loud, and I wanted some music on. And these are good for if you've got like using the Evolution chop saw, and I want something to keep on and off again, and I'm not like putting the greasy, horrible fingers inside my tabs, uh, which is what I tend to do with these. What I use these for is when I'm on the uh, wood turning lathe. And um, I've got my, uh, what do you call it, Trend Air Pro face shield mask on. So these are really good for that, but they don't work if you've got a full face mask on because the band gets in the way of the, of the headband. Uh, I don't know if I can leave a link to these in the description. I'll try. I'll just leave a link to the website. Next things. Okay, on the subject of fabricating, I've probably tried... 
10 different brands of flap discs over the years from doing, I've done stainless steel work to body work to general sheet metal type stuff to doing things in my own shed. I've never bought cheap, uh, you know, import crap ones because they just don't last. Um, and I was sent these uh, from the good people at Abrax and they are a UK based company and these are European made. And these are ceramic discs for your angle grinder. So these are basically lots and lots of really, really hard sandpaper that, um, that go on top of these all together and they just last amazingly well. They're not cheap like anything, anything that's good that lasts. These are fantastic. So um, again, I would say that these are the best flap discs I've ever used. I had a selection of the 80 and the 36. The 36 is great for really rough welding, grinding down stuff. And the 80 is great for just linishing and paint prep, that type of thing. The light rust removal on nothing that's precision, you know, fancy surfaces or anything like that. What they're kind of good for, if you're just having small bead work, so I've been doing a lot of 20 by 20 by, um, by 3 mil box section type stuff. These are good for just knocking down the welds and then flattening off and then blending back that grind um, to where you're you know, flat. So these are really nice for that and it's less you know, disc changing and that type of thing. Uh, link in the description. Okay, this is probably, I'm going to say this is probably the most expensive in the list, and I think this is about 50, 60 quid. Um, I bought this earlier in the year, and I might do a separate video on this, because it's great, but it could be a so, so much better. And I've, over the last, well, I always have, I've been doing a lot of uh, machining work off camera, and I've been doing a lots of tapping and um, threading and that type of thing, so... This is the Gear Wrench Ratchet Tap and Die Set. Now, uh, I saw these originally on Blondie Hacks, probably about a year and a half ago, and fell off my chair when I saw the price. Um, but like anything, you know, I wanted the, um, uh, you know, I saved up and, and I got them, and I'm really pleased I did. Now, there's kind of two options that you can get on the Gear Wrench stuff. You can either get like a complete set, and they've got the drills and the tapping sizes referenced to, you know, whatever thread that you're trying to cut. Um, I saw those in person and I thought the taps and the drills looked crap, to be honest, uh, no offense. Uh, so I went for the standalone, you know, you just buy the tools. I don't really want the, um, the cutting tools with it anyway. And it was kind of really expensive for what it is. Now I'm not going to go too much into detail of why I don't like this. I'll probably start doing like, um, a tool week thing. Cause I quite like those and I watch those myself. So I thought, well, you know, may as well, um, may as well chuck my card into the pile. And these will allow you to either put in a small tap, so probably anything from about M4, maybe a little bit bigger. If you're doing BA stuff, you might struggle on the really small taps. But they're really nice because you've got a forward and reverse. And it's really handy, especially for when you're on the lathe. You want to put something between your tailstock and your chuck and your part, and you can cut these um, without kind of spitting a tap in your tailstock and ruining your jaws. Um, now the die holder I've not used because I don't really have any hexagonal size tap. Mine are all the round split dies um, that we've got, uh, so I haven't really used that. But the, the tapping function, I've used the smaller size only because I don't really tap anything bigger than M12. Um, anything bigger than that, I kind of just thread cut on the lathe or whatever. Uh, so it's been very, very good. I do like it. And I'd say it's worth the 45 quid. Any more than that, I just wouldn't wouldn't kind of buy it. I think they're really popular with like elect chickens and people who are doing thin gauge stuff because I think somewhere it kind of says that it's not strictly meant for tapping. It's only meant for thread chasing. I, I don't know who told me that. I can't remember, to be honest. I could be wrong. But again, I'll leave a link to the description. I do like it. It's... Um, they do mislead you on the advertising a little bit. It's not American made. I thought gear wrench stuff was. It's not. It's Taiwanese. Um, but it's still a pretty good, you know, it's still a pretty good quality tool. And um, I'm pleased with the results so far. Um, but not perfect. I might do a video. If you're interested, leave a comment. Next tool. Okay, this is a knife. I don't like knives. I'm not a knife kind of guy. I'm going to eat my own words eventually because I'm going to make a knife. I know. 
But this is a chisel knife and it's made by uh, Holt, Holter Falls, Holter Falls, Holter Falls, Holt for Tools, something like that. And it's a chisel knife, so it's a double beveled chisel styled knife and uh, this is great for hacking, chopping, shearing and kind of, you know, doing the scraping. And these are really cheap. I think they're probably seven to a tenner, seven pounds, ten pounds, something like that. I can't remember now. I've had this for quite a while. It's great for the Amazon boxes, breaking down big boxes that I've had. And I don't really care about it because, again, it's very cheap. So I don't mind using this to scrape, you know, crap off a cylinder head or, you know, just crap off anything really, you know, just use it as a, you know, a tool. I've beat it on this a few times and the holster is, is all right. I won't put it on my belt. I think it's a bit daft really, but it's good to just protect the blade. It's easy to sharpen as well. So you can just put this on a bench grinder or you can use just a diamond file, stone, whatever. And um, for the money, it has been really good. It's just carbon steel. It's nothing particularly fancy, but again, it's a good working um, tool and again, don't really like pointy sharp, you know, knife things. I'm not that kind of guy. So this is a good in-between balance for me and I don't mind wrecking it with stuff. I've had a custom knife made for me, love it. I absolutely treasure it, but I wouldn't want to be doing what I do with this with my custom made knife. Oh, and they, the handle's nice and, you know, kind of chunky and it's, it's getting cold this time of year and you don't want like a really cold metal wood handle. It's like the plastic, I, I like it, I like it. Link is in the description. Next one. Okay, these are maybe a little bit silly, I don't know, but I really like these. These are what I would class as man scissors. And if that sounds sexist, I'm very sorry. Uh, but these are made by Stanley and uh, typically I don't particularly like new Stanley products um, because of the, you know, I'm, I don't know, how do I word this? How do, <laughs> how do I word it? Um, I, I like Stanley tools. I have many Stanley tools, but a lot of them that I've had are kind of getting a little bit crappy unless you buy the more expensive ones, which obviously they have a budget range and they have a consumer range and they have a pro range. And these are kind of, I don't know what these class as, but these are really good. So these are, again, man scissors. I've used these to cut things that I would class as scissor work. So I've not been cutting MIG wire, hardened cables, or trying to cut off pins. I've been using these properly. So anything from, um, from duct tape to, I've cut some like thinner strapping stuff that look like seat belts. Um, good for trimming down belts and cutting things up that you want to be binned. Uh, unboxing things that, um, you know, that plastic strap thing that kills dolphins. It's really good for cutting that. And it's a lot safer than me trying to hack away at something with a knife. So I've bought actually two pairs of these. I've got some in the house that the missus keeps stealing. And I've got these out in the shed that I have to hide. Every time she comes in here, she grabs my bloody scissors. So these are great. Again, not a lot of money. And these have got really good reviews on Amazon as well. So it's quite... Um, you know, quite pleased with that. Uh, and I think that's kind of going to be a wrap. I've got one more that, to be honest, is very recent, but I've um, acquired this not that long ago. And this is a Nebo or Nebo, N-E-B-O. I'll try and leave a link uh, to this in the description. And it's a rechargeable battery torch. And this is a very, very slim. This can fit into a pocket, an apron, or, you know, somewhere in like a glove box in your car. And it is USB powered waterproof survival torch, uh, which sounds lovely, isn't it? And uh, I can't actually remember, there we go. So you've got a, uh, what do you call it? Micro USB, which I'm not a massive fan of, but this is rechargeable, waterproof, and it's just kind of the right size to not be a pain to carry around. It's not heavy, but it's solid metal. The buttons are proper. You know, it's a, I think you can hear that. It's a proper clicky button, which I quite like. I have had no luck with torches. And so far, this has been my favorite one I've bought in a long, long time. I bought this from a local shop who had it in just like a little display. I'm not sure of the actual cost of these. I think the retail around 10 to 15 pounds. And I've recharged it when I bought it and I've had it for uh three months three months now and it's still 
it's still making lumens. Very pleased. Again, I will leave a link in the description. Now, I wanted this to kind of be a, um, you know, a bit of a treat yourself kind of budget. And uh, for those who follow me, very thankful. Um, I haven't kind of included my new table saw, my expensive chop saw, a jet wash, because it's kind of not, you know, it's not this type of video. Um, I've bought more expensive tools this year and I've bought more completely different to this type of tools this year that I've been really, really thankful and very lucky to have, such as the table saw, the chop saw. I've bought a 3D printer, which I'll be doing an upcoming video on, and uh, I'm gonna try and do it as a bit more of how I use 3D printing within my workshop, um, which might be a little bit of, uh, of interest to you guys. So I'm gonna stop waffling on because I know I do do that quite a bit. And um, I'm going to wish you all a very, very happy uh, Christmas time and an excellent new year. I'm sorry I haven't been churning out many videos at the moment. Um, the ones that I've been doing have taken a hell of a lot of time and they've been very long, very boring and very kind of direct for a in particular product such as the dust extraction and the table saw. I've been working on some other projects alongside it. I've got about six videos that are all kind of banked together and probably two of them I'm kind of comfortable and liking them with. I'm struggling at the minute to be happy with the content that I'm making, um, whether it be due to lighting, poor audio, or just a bit crap. So um, as well as personal things and editing and just getting this place functional and working and putting plug sockets where I want them and putting lights where I want them and you know the score. Working in a new workshop is great. I've got more things, but I'm still trying to get that flow and things into the correct places for me to actually work. And I'm probably getting about six hours a week at the minute in this workshop, so. Um, uh, thanks again for all my new subscribers. It's kind of skyrocketed in the last um, four weeks or so, which is fantastic. And we're, again, quite close to another milestone. So, uh, again, thank you so much for watching. Please bear with me. I have got some really cool new designs that I might just put in a little bit of a sneak peek at the end here. But um, I'll start waffling. Thank you very much again, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.